India's Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft is inching closer to the surface of the moon. It is merely three days away from attempting a soft landing near the lunar south pole. If successful, India will only be the fourth country to land a craft on the moon. Now to decode this complex mission for us, we are being joined by a former ISRO scientist, Manish Purohit. Welcome to the broadcast, sir. Thank you, Anya. Now, we are seeing the final stage of Chandrayaan-3 mission. Can you explain what is happening right now as we speak and how will a successful landing look like? Okay, so right now, at this moment, the connections have been set with the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter of our Chandrayaan-3 lander. Now, this is very crucial because this gives us an extra added advantage on the communication channel. So, our Chandrayaan-3 right now is having different possibilities of communicating back to Earth. Now, why it is important? Because last time we had a communication blackout. So this is one thing that has happened right now, just right now. Now, after three days, when we are attempting to land on moon, that duration, when we just say, okay, fine, we are ready and now we are going for the touchdown, that duration of 17 minutes is very infamously known as 17 minutes of terror. Now, why they are called 17 minutes of terror? Because at that time, the complete process will be autonomous. It will be the whole decisions will be done by the computer on board, the algorithm, if it is strong enough to make right decisions, right choices, then we will have a really smooth and soft landing. Because in Chandrayaan 2's case, we faced some fiascos there. Now, let's get into the depth of what these 17 minutes are. Fine. So, let's say we are at that moment when the command is sent, fine, start the power descent of our Vikram, Chandrayaan 3 on the lunar surface. That time we will be somewhere around 25 kilometers from the surface of the moon and we will be around 750 kilometers away from our landing spot. So we have to travel horizontally around 750 kilometers and vertical we have to come down 25 kilometers. But that time our speed will be really really fast. We will be traveling at around 1600 meters per second. That too in the horizontal direction. So gradually we have to convert this part we have to make it a little at an angle and keeping in mind that we have to reduce the horizontal velocities and we have to manage the vertical velocities because as we will slow down our craft it will start going down because moon's gravity will come into the role and it will start pulling it down so vertical velocities have to be taken care of because we can't simply let it drop so what will happen, we will cover around 700 kilometers during this phase of around 11 and a half minute of thruster firing and we will convert this particular situation, let's say this is our Vikram and we will make it go at this angle for right. that initial 11, 11 and a half minutes, right? And at that time, our velocities will reduce, our horizontal velocity will come down to one fourth of what it was at the beginning and our vertical velocities will slowly start to build up. We have to control our vertical velocities because finally when we have to touch down, it has to come down to zero. In this process, one more thing will be done. For these initial 11 minutes, we will be calibrating all our sensors, our cameras, our subsystems, and our algorithm will be doing checks that everything is in right place, is it working fine, and if there is some calibration is required, that is the time we have to do it because after right. just after those 11 and a half minutes we will go into the camera costing phase we call it attitude control phase where the position of the craft will be maintained constant for next 10 seconds and we will be clicking photos capturing the images of the lunar terrain and we'll be comparing those images with, with onboard images that we have from our Chandrayaan-2 orbiter. Chandrayaan-2 orbiter has made around 10,000 rounds around the moon and we have really good quality, high definition images of the lunar terrain. Once compared with the help of AI and when the landing location is finalized, then after those 10 seconds, we will start the fine breaking phase. In the fine breaking phase, we will be around 800 meters above the ground hovering means no vertical velocity, no horizontal velocity and our Vikram will be from this position, it will be in this particular orientation, right. ready to go down. At that point, our cameras will again start 
capturing the images our sensors will start taking the readings and checking the altitude checking the vertical velocities again they will be calibrated and then one more descent will be made that will be a controlled descent and we will come down to at a height of 150 meters above the ground all right now there there will be there will be a test we call it go no go test go no go test says that if our hazard detection camera says that everything is fine down there we are ready to touch down then we will in the next 73 seconds we will touch down on the lunar surface and if it sees something like you know there may be a stone a boulder or something an uneven surface is there then that will be a no go condition and in case of a no go condition our craft our vikram will hover to a next position 150 meters ahead and then it will attempt the touchdown so this is the All whole right. scenario that is going to happen on that day All right thank you for so meticulously decoding that for us now mr purohit what makes lunar landing so challenging especially when it comes to the moon's craters see actually uh, there are many challenges out of which the very first one is that we don't have any atmosphere on the moon to slow us down If you see recently for our Gaganyaan module, we had one drop test. Drop parachutes are used in re-entry shuttles when the crew is in that module, and we have to slow it down using the atmosphere of the Earth. But now we don't have any such possibility when we have to do a soft landing on the moon because we don't have any atmosphere there. First part. Second, in that case, you are completely and totally dependent on the burning of engines, right. thrusters. Last time in Chandrayaan 2, our thrusters went a little haywire, and that resulted in all that error building up, and finally we lose that we we lost our lander Vikram in Chandrayaan 2. Yeah. So thruster firing has to be controlled. It has to be perfectly controlled. And you know one thing very peculiar about these thrusters is that they are pulsed. Pulsed means for every second, 500 to 900 pulses are sent to open and close the valves to control the thrust. the speed with which they are burning the fuel and they are generating that upward force to slow the velocities down so this is but bit peculiar third part is the lunar terrain lunar terrain this, they, they might it might be very sandy it might be some rocky they may be yeah. craters if in case you get to step down in a crater and you are hidden from the ground stations and if you don't have any orbiter going around then that's all there will be a communication blackout that's why today's event in which we had our vikram communicate with the chandrayaan 2 orbiter was very important because if in case somehow in an unforeseen situation we have to land in the lunar crater then and we are not visible to our ground stations isro's deep space network big antennas they are not able to trace us we will be using our orbiter to communicate back to earth apart from that craters will be having some inclined surfaces Yeah. So that inclined surfaces can result in toppling also. Now, what is there is our lander can easily land even if there is an inclination of 12 degrees. So it is having some telescopic legs like we have in camera tripods. Yeah. So we can adjust all the four legs independently, and we can balance it because if it is not balanced properly, then rover may not be able to come out. So these are the few, very few challenges. Apart from that, lunar dust is a very big challenge because. it is electrostatically charged so there are so many different aspects about lunar landing these are the few that i mentioned right right now uh, i want to go back to a point you briefly mentioned chandrayaan 2 it was barely 30 minutes away from completing its mission when it crash landed on the lunar surface now experts on the matter say that chandrayaan 3 has been stress tested and isro has taken care of all known unknowns what kind of steps have been taken post chandrayaan 2's failure so that chandrayaan 3 goes as success see actually uh, we can we can understand this with one single sentence is in the space community in the space fraternity failures are the biggest learning lessons so chandrayaan 2's right. failure failure to land properly it taught us many things the very first thing that taught us was it was designed in keeping in mind that it is going to succeed in each and every maneuver it was success based design and success based design can may maybe not able to handle any error now chandrayaan 3's design is 
failure based design means chandran 3 is design keeping in mind that if this subsystem fails then what will happen if this part fails then what will happen if sensors won't respond if thrusters won't and won't respond if landing legs have some issues so what has been done the whole the whole setup of vikram has been beefed up landing legs have been made more robust more elaborate landing tests have been done and when you know what happened in chandrayaan 2 during the camera costing phase once the speeds have been brought down to around 380 meters per second like that horizontal speed that time it was clicking images of the lunar terrain and there the errors started accumulating it started generating more thrust it started losing the velocities and it was not at that spot where it was supposed to be at the end of that particular phase and we lost it so we were at around 350 meters height from the ground and 850 meters away from the landing spot in the case of chandrayaan 2 so what happened wrong there was it was you know hard wired hard coded in the algorithm that you have to go and land at the spot but in chandrayaan 3 we have made it flexible our algorithm will be doing error checks simultaneously continuously real time so that no errors accumulate whether it is about orientation vertical velocities horizontal velocities thrusting engines whatever it is for part second it will never let any emergency situation build up if we see that we are not at the landing spot at the end of the duration at the end of the whole that phase it will attempt to land wherever it is so so many things have been beefed up our solar panels have been made little broader because we may generate more power we have removed one engine now we are flying with four engines so we have the capability to carry more fuel that gives us freedom that if we are not at the landing spot and we don't find a perfect spot we can hover again go to the next spot and land there so things have been beefed up in all aspects All right. Uh, now, Mr. Puroit, timing is always very crucial for any space mission. So, why is it that the landing time has been fixed at six o four p.m. on twenty third of August for Chandrayaan three? See, actually, uh, let's let's compare it with proposed Luna twenty five and ours. Luna twenty five was supposed to land on twenty first, and we were aiming for twenty third. but we were in the orbit even before luna was there we 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 entered into the orbit we had done our deboosting so why we were waiting for such a long duration so first we will see why we have picked 23rd and then we we'll go back to the time see the whole thing depends on very simple aspect when the sun is rising you have to land so the latitudes and longitudes that we have picked those latitudes and longitudes will see the sun rise at that particular moment our mission is designed for 14 days 14 earth days when the sun sun will be shining on the lunar surface once the sun sets there there will be 14 big earth days equivalent to earth days 14 big nights they will be really very cold and we don't have any power source there because we are generating power with the solar panels using the sunlight so when you don't have any power source your batteries will discharge it's very cold the system goes into hibernation and it is very we are very, not very sure about it whether it will again wake up once the sun starts shining so we can't miss on those crucial 14 days yeah. that's why specifically we will be landing on that spot at that time when the sun starts rising from the horizon right now what are some of the mysteries expected to unravel at the lunar south pole sir see the biggest thing is they are we want to search for the water ice and yeah. that is the only one big thing that justifies this whole mission if we are able to do that thing because next plan missions let's say artemis luna 26 luna 27 luna 28 so many missions have been planned china is planning to go to luna south pole why yes. because luna south pole promises of luna ice that water ice and that water ice can you know it will it will you know put an extra impetus to the research and the exploration capabilities of the global community because then we are going to make moon our gateway to the interplanetary missions this mission this planning is huge what we are going to do is we are going to put a space station in the lunar orbit from there astronauts will go down on the moon and they will practice lifts off they will be practicing to going to the interplanetary journeys beyond moon towards the mars using those launch pads so 
that's why south pole is important because this whole thing can be done once we can confirm that we have water because you can break water to get oxygen which can act as our oxidant for the fuel also and we need oxygen also for our survival so that's why this whole crucial aspect is reaching the south pole and exploring more about the lunar south poles all right mr purohit since you mentioned the global community if successful what will this mean for india it will mean a huge step forward see we will will become the first one to have soft landing on the moon we were the first one to have hard landing on the moon with moon impact probe in chandrayaan 1 we will be the first one to have soft landing on the moon this will put us in and and you know at the first step of the race of the technological demonstration part of it where the global community will be looking forward there are so many nations who might be aspiring for the space explorations and these nations probably can become our probable customers because our new space policy aims of penetrating into the big global space economy right now we stand at 2% but our aim is that we should penetrate to 9% by 2030 and this global space economy is huge it is around 400 plus billion usds and such a big opportunity awaits for india so our new space policy says that we will open up our doors for the private segment private players we will do the technology transfer we will do the technology transfer for the satellite building for the launch vehicle design isro will be exploring more about the scientific exploration part of it research part of it so in all if you look at isro it started as a collaborative collaborative space program where europe america and soviets all were contributing we got our first satellite launch through the soviets when already their four five luna missions were already undertaken the luna program was in full fledgedly in full force we 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 were uh, we were having our first satellite launch when already americans have set foot on the moon so from there coming to this point when the whole world is looking at us japan wants to use our vikram lander for their lupex their lunar exploration project they want our vikram to uh, give them the soft landing hyperspace one of the private entity they are uh, they have signed an mou with isro they want to explore the possibility of using our launch vehicle for their future proposal of developing a space station so these are a few positive aspects of demonstrating our capabilities so once once we are able to you know do the soft landing and tell the world that right now we have the capability of landing on the moon we have the technology to have our, our rover go on the lunar surface communicate back to earth this will give us big required boost and confidence that we desperately need now because we are aiming high we are aiming big to contribute to the space economy All right very quickly Mr Purohit you have closely worked with Isro your former scientist of Isro so how optimistic are you about Chandrayaan 3 mission Oh right now right now it's like you know if you talk about the technology there's 100% confidence about it <laughs> but there are so many variables there are so many knowns and so many unknowns and unknowing the unknowns that creates the problem but still if we if you talk about our procedures that we have followed the steps that we have taken i can say this time we are going to be surely successful that's great to hear we will be closely tracking the landing of course that is slated for 23rd of august for now thank you for speaking with us mr purohit and decoding this very very complex mission for us thank you thank you thank you